Well, Sir John, we're continuing to talk about yep. your very interesting book that you've written for us, Saving Jaguar. Um, one or two more stories, please. Um, the racing, of course, was interspersed with all the other activities that, 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 that went on. I think one of the most, in a way, dramatic was the, the original deal that I did with Tom Walkinshaw. Yes. Obviously, we had no money. Mm. Uh, we'd only just started to see the possibility of breaking even mm. and when he came along to see me. And I said to him, well, we can only pay by results, so if you win, mm. we'll pay you. Mm. And so that's the way we did it. <laughs> that was a good it's the deal. only time I got the best out of Tom. <laughs> After, he was very cute and very, yeah. very difficult to, yes. yeah. to, um, to beat in a negotiation. I remember he was driving when we were racing the XJSs, and I used to grab hold of him when he just got out of the car, and he was absolutely exhausted. I mean, <laughs> talked to him about money at that point, but he was cute <laughs> even then, I have to say. <laughs> well, he was a Scot, of course. Yes, he was. Yes, he was very. Uh, he was a tremendous personality. I got on extremely well with him, and he played it very straight with me. Mm -hmm. Although other people had different opinions of him, but I always found him straight. Mm. How did things go in the States, the US market, which is obviously always I, I Jaguar's most important? I think there's a number of great scenes there that mm. I think would play well in any kind of movie. I think the first time I met the dealers, when I told them in a series of meetings throughout the States about my plan to have quality, quality and quality as yes. the first three items on our program. and. Uh, I remember the, uh, the, the, the gloomy nature. They thought I'd come over to tell them that, the, that I was closing Jaguar down. And so they were deeply relieved when I said I was going to continue and that my program was to make these beautiful cars work. And they got more and more enthusiastic as I went along. First of all, I explained, of course, how we'd managed to get the paint plant going, and now they had a range of colors. I remember the great roar of approval when I told them that the man with the yellow spray gun uh, on pain of death hadn't to use it again, <laughs> and they roared with approval. Uh, and I remember the shock and disbelief when I said the 1982 model year cars would be with them for sale on the 1st of October 1981. And there was whistling of disbelief. They thought, well, BLMC had never done that. They'd never given them the car on time. And of course in America that was extremely important because yes. they were discounting the cars yes. for most of the year yes. uh, until they arrived, you know, the following June kind yes. of thing. Yes. So it was a very important thing to give them good fresh cars at the start of the model year. So and the, uh, the next thing was um, um, perhaps the most discouraging point was when I could sense that we were getting the cars right. We were beginning to get the quality under control and so on and so forth. But still the BLMC board wanted to close me down because they thought we'd never ever become profitable. And I needed a sales forecast that was big enough to demonstrate profit yes. for 1982. And the only sales force I could really influence was the US one. And uh, they had to put their forecast up from the 3,000 they sold in 1981 to 9,000 for 1982. Trouble. I mean, a heck, of a, yes. a heck of a lift. But when I showed them around the factory, when they could see the way the enthusiasm of the workforce, then I got them all together in um, the, the Hilton at Stratford-on-Avon, and I said, well, it's up to you. You've got to make your minds up. Hey, can you give me a forecast that'll be big enough to keep us alive? I need 9,000 cars. They'd got it up to 6,000, had uh, the North American company, so it was 50% more cars. And I remember Robbie Robinson, who was a cockney from, uh, uh, from Southern California, and he, he, he emigrated years earlier, and he, he, he was the first to stand up, and he said, in my view, these are good cars today, we can sell them. I'm in for 50% more and I'm speaking for all the dealers of Southern California. Tremendous. And after that, the whole t one table after another stood up, 50% more. <laughs> and I said to Graham Whitehead, what's your forecast? Is it 9,000 or is it 6,000? And he said, it's 9,000, Mr. Chairman. Great and stuff. we were on our way. Brilliant. Wonderful. And Wonderful. we sold more than that, actually. We, we sold almost 10,000 mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And that was really the turnaround, because we did it with a smaller workforce. Mm. I cut about 25% of the workforce out, mm. 
and they made 50% more cars yeah. and that was just an incredible win-win win-win yes. yes of course another factor in all of this with the BL story and particularly the Jaguar story was of course the government of the day previously the Labour government had cozied up to the unions come around for tea and cakes but then things changed dramatically, didn't they? And you got the backing, this was we crucial? We got the backing of the, uh, of the government and of um, Norman Tebbit in particular and, uh, and Margaret Thatcher. I don't think uh, the turnaround of, of Jaguar would have been possible under a Labour government, mm -hmm. simply because every time they'd have made us give in to the trade unions. Yes. And they would not have allowed the trade union legislation that saved us all uh, to be put in place. Don't forget it was Michael Foote who was the employment minister uh, of the um, of the Labour government in the 1970s who actually created the closed shop yes which was a really vicious piece yes. of legislation. Could you if explain? If you didn't have a union card you couldn't have a job. Yes. So that was yes. pretty vicious. So yes. when the trade union shop steward was leading them out on crazy strikes they had to go with it yes. because they might lose their union card. Yes. Now this was um, this was a brutal piece of legislation. 